Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In our first story, we're dealing with a tough old man and his revenge at a wedding. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Friend pranks my parents on their wedding day. My grandpa takes care of that. My grandpa was a quiet guy. He loved his family more than anything, and he was very, very observant. The wedding reception was in full swing. Everyone's drinking and dancing and having a great time. One of my dad's friends drunkenly decides to play a prank. He gets two more of dad's buddies to help. Grandpa notices them sneaking out and watches. Now, mom had a kick butt car. It was a blue Camaro with a Landau top. It was either a 69, 70, or 71. Mom doesn't remember. This friend of dad's also had a Camaro of the same year. Anyway, the trio go out to mom's car, pop the hood, and take a part. I think it was spark plugs, but whatever they took, it meant the car wouldn't start, leaving my parents kind of stranded. Grandpa saw this, waited till the drunk guys went back in, then took the same part from the drunk guy's car and put it in my mom's. He then took drunk guy's tools and flashlight and hid them in a coat closet. Soon it's real dark, so the newlyweds leave for their hotel room, drunk guy and his friends are even drunker and discover their car won't start. They pop the hood and see the missing part and start looking for the tools and flashlight. Grandpa walks over and says, your tools and light are in the coat closet. Hope your car's comfy because the building won't be unlocked until morning. Of course, Grandpa tells Grandma. They laugh and Grandma tells Mom and Dad. My Grandpa was the best. And our second story. Oil company general manager treats his staff like crap, so we show him and the company how much his staff is worth. Was working as an expat oil company senior staff geologist and de facto exploration manager, but without the increase in pay nor authority, just increased stress levels, in the Middle East for a southern European construction company's oil and gas concerns. The general manager was a complete seawad. Full of himself because he worked for one major oil company his whole benighted career as an engineer. So obviously he knows everything about geology, geophysics, petrophysics, etc. He didn't and doesn't. His management style, if one could grace his screaming and infantile fuming as a style, could be described variously as inept micromanagement or management by objection. He would berate and degrade the entire staff in meetings with partners, which made everyone terribly uncomfortable to see such a lack of decorum and professionality. Scream so the whole office could hear over mundane idiocies such as lack of coffee pods in the kitchen or why 6,000 meters of pipe had never materialized, even though the unpaid invoice was still nestled on his desk. In a multicultural office, he would rant and rail at top volume about useless effing bleeps, effing self-important and entitled expats, and GD effing bleep bleeps, those engineers and others from the subcontinent region, called the firm the worst effing oil company in the Middle East, at least here we agreed, not only a racist, but a sexist, misogynist, general misanthrope, and a complete and total waste of carbon. He got in my goodie locker one day after a well was drilled, but yet to be tested or completed, based on my prospect and recommendation, looked somewhat dismal on the logs. Truth is, the well came in for over 8,000 BOPD and was the Jake leg and lowest bid from whom he always took kickbacks, loggers that had effed over the logs, and he absolutely refused my insistence to re-log the pay zones. I was called just about every nasty name in the oil patch handbook, right down to the part where he told me my alma mater were a bunch of effing idiots for granting me my three petroleum geology degrees. After 26 years in the patch, I decided that no job was worth this and laid plans for a quick, early, and entirely unannounced departure. I quickly related the fact that I was doing a runner to some of my other expat compatriots over drinks one Thursday evening and was greeted with the revelation that several, read most, of the other expats there were one, thinking the same thing, and two, if I left, they were gone as well. We carefully laid our plans. The company provided housing, i.e. paid a ridiculously low monthly fee so we had to live in cheap housing or sucked it up with our families and honing up additional funds to live in decent villas, so we all gave clandestine notice to our respective landlords about our imminent departure and asked they keep it on the QT. Since they were paid by check, 12 per year, they were already compensated, 
They were both delighted that they had already been paid once and they could rent out our abodes after we left for essentially double rent. Cancellation of internet, water, and power were taken. A quick email, print the automated response, and carry it with you if the border guards gave us any crap when we buggered off. Since we were all Western European, Canadian, or American, we decided to book a block of business class tickets, as well as our contractual due, to London on the same British Airways flight. In fact, with families and all, we booked the entire business class section. We all had been in-country for years and years, so arranging, packing, and shipping or storage of our belongings was a snap. We were all members of the move every 18 months to follow the money crowd, so this was the easiest part of our master plan. No one leaked a word of this, but some of the locals in the company somehow sensed the change in the decorum of the company's daily activities. When one really doesn't give a crap, the stress levels magically evaporate down to near zero and wondered aloud what was going on. We confided in a few of them. These were not just colleagues, but personal friends in many cases, with the proviso that they would tell no one under the pain of bacon sandwiches. They were all Muslims, and they thought the threat hilarious. Like I said, many were and still are close personal friends. The week dragged on, and school was about to let out for the summer, when most expats bugger off for one to three months to escape the stupidly hot and humid Middle Eastern broiler season, so the usual requests for contractual time off were made, and all roundly rejected by Er Mr. D-Head General Manager, and life proceeded on its merry way. Finally, Liberation Friday arrived, weekends being Friday and Saturday at this time in the country. We contracted a local carrier and had a bus rented to pick up everyone and take us all to the airport. Luggage tagged and schlepped off to the bowels of BA's incomprehensible baggage handling inner workings through check-in, customs, and passport control without so much as a sideways glance. We all invaded the English pub after hitting duty-free one last time. We toasted each other on a job well done and best soon forgotten. Sitting in business class, waiting on takeoff, quaffing my third double vodka and bitter lemon, I did a quick tally. The company was, in this one instance, losing its senior staff geologist come exploration manager, senior geophysicist, senior petrophysicist, senior geomodeler, senior reservoir engineer, drilling engineer, operations geologist, logistics manager, senior surveyor th three secretaries, wives of the aforementioned senior crowd, and the HSEQ manager. A small company, total 50 or so employees, could withstand the loss of two or maybe three of their senior level employees, but not this mass emigration. My good friends whom we left behind regaled us for months regarding the situation in the office come Sunday, bloody Sunday. Once the realization of what had happened, the GM went completely off the rails, totally crap housed and completely berserk, or variations on that theme. The first glimmer of recognition of the severity of the of rotund bail if jeers about to descend upon him were when all calls to various abodes were answered with, that number is no longer in service. Please check blah blah blah. Emails went unanswered. However, our GSMs were still working, although we all blocked her D-head's number, though we still allowed text messages. Text one, where are you? Why aren't you at work? Was just the beginning. In the words of Khan Noonien Singh, we let him eat static. Text 2. Where the F are you? If you don't get your butts in here immediately, and other such impotent threats. Yes, please. I'd love another drink. Rising panic ensued. Text 3. This isn't funny. Come in and we'll act like this never happened. We all sat on the plane anticipating touchdown. By the time we hit London, it was 7 o'clock local time, but 11 o'clock back there time. Air D-Head GM called an emergency meeting of the remnants of his staff, all locals, and demanded to know what they knew about this huge display of insubordination. No, never heard a word. Why? What happened? And where is everybody? Were the responses. Her D-Head blows a gasket and immediately sacks everyone left in the office. Unfortunately, all that were left were a couple of T-Boys, who were always in demand, and a bunch of locals. Due to the country's ization plan, it would be easier to fly a fully loaded 747 through the hole of a bagel than it would be to dispose of a local indigenous worker. Long story short, he couldn't, and was instantly reported to the proper ministry in charge of such matters as one of the secretaries was kin to the Minister of Employment Affairs. It's all wasta, nepotism, in this part of the world. Final damages, loss of 10-plus senior employees, 
Fines of over 5,000 rials a day due to improper business practices, firing locals, loss of two drilling rigs due to lack of personal and inability to provide work as per contracts, and cessation of drilling of two active wells into the hole, so to speak, about $3.5 million each, and 10 to 12 field development wells, so long cash flow, loss of a 3D seismic contract worth approximately $3 million US dollars, adios exploration program. Loss of A rating, meaning you take a backseat to all who try and tender rigs, seismic crews, etc. Good luck sourcing oil country tubular goods, logging or completion services, and pretty much all field-related activities. Loss of face with several ministries. No small item here. Huge importance is placed on competence and perceived amiability. Au revoir, field development plan acceptance or seismic contract approval. Loss of six locals to the National Oil Company. Figured if expats deserted this amalgamation of idiocy masquerading as an oil company, they should bail as well. Ultimate temporary closure of the office, cessation of all field activities, payments of 150-200% to 200 on defaulted loans and contracts, and loss of several lucrative pipeline right-of-ways and transfer contracts. They had to continue to pay the still-employed locals, basically sending them a check for sitting at home playing Xbox, and loss of 25% of their acreage due to non-fulfillment of contracts with the government. Last I heard, her GM D-head is thrashing around South Texas, trying to sell some sort of jumped-out and shady oil deals with companies who've seen their own projects quashed by plummeting oil prices. Funny thing is, he keeps running into people, now on the other side of the desk, who both know him and in one or two cases actually worked for him. And our last story. Hand in your keys. Got told of this guy who worked in another department. He used to work as a sales rep for a national company. There were about eight reps, all with their own sales area. One day, they all got a call to meet at the main office to bring laptops, phones, etc. Mostly, they worked out of home and very rarely had any need to go to the main office as everything was email, phone, post, etc. Between them, they realized that something wasn't right all being called at the same time on the same day. They decided to meet up at various locations and leave a car behind and join the next car, eventually arriving in two cars. They got called in by higher management and got sacked on the spot, sorry, made redundant, told to leave all company property behind, given train tickets home, and escorted off the premises. He never did find out what the reaction was when they realized that the cars they had the keys for weren't parked outside the office. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.